This is the ASP Micro TM160 made by AGM Global Vision. It is currently one of the cheapest thermal imagers on the market. I spent a lot of time testing and evaluating the Psyonix Aurora digital night vision devices. One use case that kept being suggested to me over and over by defenders of the Aurora is static observation. However, for the cost of even the cheapest Psyonix Aurora, you can get a no-shit thermal imaging monocular. Thermal monoculars are essentially digital cameras just like a Psyonix Aurora, so they share a lot of the same limitations. To that end, you're not going to be using an AGM ASP Micro for shooting, you're not going to be using it for navigation, you're not going to be wearing it on your head, at least I hope not. So how does a cheap thermal camera fare when it comes to static observation, sitting in one place and using it to detect animals, people, or vehicles? We're going to find that out and we're going to do some comparisons later. First of all, let's talk about the device itself. AGM makes several thermal devices at different price points. The Micro TM160 is the cheapest one, and it has a correspondingly low resolution. The more money you spend, the higher resolution you get, and that's going to give you better detection range. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The device itself is a pretty basic handheld monocular. You may think that it looks pretty similar to the FLIR TK Scout thermal monocular, and you're probably right. My understanding is that AGM was formed by employees that used to work for Armasite. Armasite was purchased by FLIR. Armasite was formed by guys who used to work for ATN, so basically there's only five guys working in US night vision, and they just make a new company every couple years where they get bored. The ASP Micro is a little bit bigger than a Psyonix Aurora or a PVS-14 night vision monocular. It has buttons on the top to power it on and control modes, as well as the interface, since again, remember this is basically a digital camera. On the bottom is a standard tripod mounting screw and a USB-C charging port and data port. The device has a built-in battery and built-in storage, so no, you cannot swap batteries in the field. However, you could charge it from a battery pack and the battery life is very good. AGM bills the battery life of the device at about 8 hours. I use the device several times for a few hours each time and I charge it after every use. I never saw the battery go below maximum. The TM160 has a lens cap at the front, and it has a standard camera viewfinder at the back with a rubber eye cup. The TM160 does take a few seconds to boot up, which can be kind of annoying. However, because the battery life is so long, you can pretty much turn it on at the start of the evening and just leave it on as long as you're using it. Another reason to leave the device on as long as you're using it is that even after the device boots, there's a couple of seconds where you can't change modes. The device generates an image, however, it will not allow you to switch modes, and if you try to switch modes too much, it might lock up for a second. If you press the camera button, it will take a picture. If you hold the camera button down for several seconds, it will start recording. The TM160 doesn't have a built-in microphone, so you get recordings with no sound. The zoom button toggles between two different digital zoom modes and the standard mode. I find that the resolution of the viewfinder is high enough that there's not a lot of benefit to using the digital zoom. That might not be the case on the higher resolution devices. We'll talk about those more later. There are four different modes of the TM160. White Hot and Black Hot are the traditional thermal modes that you remember from Call of Duty. Red Hot is like White Hot mode, except the hottest things in the image are additionally colored red. And Fusion mode is, I don't know, it's just colors and shit. I don't find it that useful, except as a novelty. Buried in the rather cumbersome menu are a lot of additional features. You can turn on a marking mode that highlights the hottest thing in the image with a green crosshair. You can also switch between jungle mode and detection mode. I didn't find them to make much of a difference, at least on this device. There's a built-in rangefinder, sort of. What you do is mark the top and bottom of a subject, and then it calculates the distance based on the average height of a person. Images and video generated by the camera have a 720 by 576 resolution, the same as the viewfinder. Those images are blown up quite a bit since the actual resolution of the sensor is 160 by 120. The TM384 is a significantly more expensive thermal monocular that has a horizontal resolution of 384. The higher resolution device is going to allow you to identify targets and detect targets at a much longer range. AGM gives very useful data on the product listings for all of these devices on their website. AGM breaks down the detection range, recognition range, and identification range of the different monoculars on their website. The TM160 seems to typically retail right around 400 bucks. The TM384 retails at about 1200 bucks. The range on the more expensive model is a little over double that of the TM160. AGM estimates that you can detect a human-sized target at 200 yards with a TM160. You can recognize what it is at 50 yards, and you can positively identify it at 25 yards. At around 400 bucks, the TM160 is cheaper than pretty much all models of the Aurora camera, especially since they discontinued the Sport. 
It obviously has a significantly lower resolution than the Psionics Aurora. However, the important thing to keep in mind here is that Thermal doesn't care how dark it gets. It's not true night vision, but it works extremely well in extremely low light environments. In a high light environment, the increased resolution of the Psionics Aurora will give you a greater identification range than the Micro TM160. In a low light environment, you might not see anything with the Aurora. The ASP Micro just won't care. AGM lists the refresh rate of the TM160 as 50 Hz. I'm pretty sure that's interlaced, and what you end up getting is 25 frames per second in the video. And it seems like you get about 25 frames per second on the viewfinder as well. I did a couple of different tests with the TM160 just to see how it performed. In one test, I recorded myself walking down a road to about 150 yards away from the device to test the four different modes. I found that the traditional white hot and black hot did provide the best contrast and the best identification. Fusion mode seems mostly like a novelty, and red hot mode doesn't seem to add all that much to the basic white hot mode. It's kind of distracting, and I think you're better off using white hot mode with the mark feature, just to indicate what the hottest thing in the image is. Based on my tests, I think their numbers are about correct. At 100 plus yards, you can definitely tell that there's something there, but it's really only a small blob of indistinct pixels. At 50 yards is really when you can distinguish between human and animal and you have to be pretty close before you can recognize who a person is under thermal. I tested the TM160 looking off the side of the highway at a field, and there were some animals out there, but I really couldn't tell what they were. Deer, pigs, dogs, sheep, cows, I don't know. Something. They were definitely animals, and they were definitely moving, but I really couldn't tell you much more than that. That was probably at about 75 to 100 yards. I also did a side-by-side -side comparison of the TM160 and the Psionix Aurora Pro. I pointed them across a big open field, and I ran about 125 to 150 yards out and back. Conditions were fairly dark. It was a clear night with a decent amount of light pollution, and full moon, however, the moon was behind the tree line. Plenty of light for the Aurora Pro to work with. Of course, the light level doesn't really matter to the TM160. As you can see, the contrast of the thermal camera makes it really easy to see that there's something out there. You can't really ID the target with either camera at that range and in those lighting conditions. One thing I forgot is the very bright IR proximity sensor on my phone, which is visible through the pocket of almost all of my pairs of pants. So when looking at this test, I would like you to imagine that you cannot see a bright purple light coming from my pants. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of the TM160, particularly given the price. What is the actual use case for a low resolution budget thermal monocular? One use is novelty. This thing is just kind of fun. It's a way you don't normally see the world. It's kind of fun to do juvenile things like look at a toilet right after you've taken a leak in it, or turn on the hot and cold taps alternately in the sink just to see the pretty colors, or walk around the neighborhood at night trying to find cats. As far as practical uses go, this is not really a night vision device, and it's definitely not a wearable device. You should not be shooting with this thing, and you cannot navigate with it. You really can't walk with it. The image does not collimate to your eye, the refresh rate means that it lags pretty badly, just like an Aurora Pro at lower frame rates. The eye relief is extremely short and the mounting options are just non-existent. You also cannot really get the lay of the land or the terrain with thermal devices of any kind. Thermal devices rely on the heat contrast between different objects in order to create a picture. The ground in front of you is pretty much all the same temperature, so the thermal device cannot distinguish any of it. After the sun goes down, you can at least see rocks because they retain heat for a lot longer than the dirt around them. If you try to walk around in the dark using a thermal monocular, you're probably just going to break an ankle. You can use it for static observation. That can either be for tactical purposes or more likely for hunting purposes. If you're doing pest control, you're probably going to prefer a thermal weapon site so you can actually take some shots under thermal. If you're doing legitimate hunting, then maybe you use a thermal device in order to sniff out some animals, and then wait for legal shooting hours to begin. As far as tactical considerations go, you could use a thermal inocular for static observation or for surveillance purposes. You can also use a thermal device for data gathering, because you can learn some interesting stuff by looking at the world through thermal vision, such as a vehicle that may have been on recently, a building that is occupied and has the heat on in the winter, a doorknob that somebody just grabbed, a toilet that somebody just used, it's pretty interesting. Anyways, this is not a device on par with thermal clip-on fusion devices, nor is it going to be as usable as, say, a FLIR breach thermal monocular. It's not going to be quite as badass as a thermal weapon sight. However, it definitely has its uses, and I'm pretty impressed with the performance, especially for the price point. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you later.